Hey everyone, it is Monday, March 19th, and we have got a very weird RVNN Live coming up. This is RVNN Live, brought to you in part by Pet Hub and GoToMeeting. Today's program brought to you by Pet Hub. Protect your pet for pennies a day with critical contact, medical, and dietary information on a smartphone scannable ID tag. And by GoToMeeting, affordable online meetings that work so you can do more and travel less. Hey everyone, this is Courtney Wall, and man, I am, it's Monday, it's Monday, 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 and of course I'm joined by Andy McCaskey, how are you? Yeah, hey, I'm doing doing well, and you said that things were weird, and it's like, oh, wait a minute, oh, okay, I get it, so uh, you'll get it too in just a moment. Yes, you'll get it too, and uh, we're not just being weird about this, it really will be weird. Uh, we have got uh, some exciting news coming up here in the next few weeks, and there is uh, a couple that we would like to get you more familiarized with, and they have joined us here on RVNN Live. Uh, it's been a couple months now, which is weird. Yeah, yep. yeah it was right after CES. That, is, that in itself is weird. That in itself yeah. is weird. <laughs> and uh, they are a couple who travels all around the world. Uh, their names are, uh, uh, their real names are Chris and Tawny, but they go by Captain and Clark. You can ch check them out at CaptainandClark.com. But we wanted to show uh, something that they had posted, and it's uh, Portland. Now, they are from the West Coast right. area, yep. and uh, they went to see. Uh, you know, Portland, uh, not home said Seattle. They're from Seattle area. They're right? from, they're, they're from, from Seattle. Seattle. They're going go. to Portland. Yep. <laughs> we went to Portland and, uh, you know, there's a lot of, um, you know, I know that the, uh, Oregon travel bureau has done a lot of efforts because, uh, Portland a is weird. It's gotten a little bit more traction because mm -hmm. of a TV show called Portlandia. Yes. And it's kind of, uh, becoming repopular. Is that how you I would describe it? I, th I think that's true. And without branching too far afield, I've, you know, watch Portlandia on my Roku, but Did we'll talk about that okay. later. We'll talk. We can talk about that later and laugh <laughs> as well. Uh, but we are going to show the clip where they take a look at Portland. So, enjoy. One thing we've heard continuously is that Portland is cool, but no one has actually been able to articulate why. So today, we're going to find out. Other than a lot of public transportation green parks, and an affinity for public water fountains, what does this city really offer other than its staunch mantra to be weird? The answer to that little quandary was recently discovered in our latest trip to Portland. If you come to Portland, don't miss out on Powell's City of Books. Millions of books on almost every topic imaginable await you. Just make sure you grab a map. You are at Powell's Bookstore, which is actually three levels full of a million different kinds of books. Kaylin's favorite so far is this one. Look how cute it is. But while Powell's feeds the mind, you're a creature of needs. We've been told by many locals that the one thing you have to try when you're in Portland is voodoo donuts. And the line behind me tells me that everyone's been right. Born and raised in Portland, Oregon, Voodoo Donuts is the king of confection. Imagine if Tim Burton had been a baker. He would have made Voodoo Donuts. Anything you can put on a donut, they have. The familiar standby is, of course, the actual Voodoo Doll Donut. Ah. <laughs> now it's you. Ah! <laughs> Sorry, I totally ruined that. <laughs> One more. That part was just a normal. Well, maybe it's like the taste of Why are you still? <laughs> this is the grape ape because it has grape flavor on the outside and lavender sprinkles. We're in at the famous Voodoo Donuts, and I'm about to eat a maple bacon bar. A bar of bacon maple? Bar of bacon. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Portland also offers a great deal of serenity. Today finds us in the lush and exotic location of Portland, Oregon. 
Portland's Chinese gardens were designed to make a city block feel like infinite space. Because nothing says Portland more than China. Modeled after a traditional Chinese home, the Chinese gardens emulate the spirit of China right in the city of Portland. So whether it's the parks, the spirits, the bridges, or even just the mountable art, Portland offers a unique and individual approach to life that really shouldn't be missed. Come on down. The math just adds up. Modern cartographers in uh, Portland, Oregon. Do you know who else was recently in Portland, Oregon? Who's that? Jeffrey Powers of uh, oh, Geekazine. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and you know, he, he really did the, the trifecta. He's from Madison, Wisconsin, <laughs> um, which may have a little bit of a weird component. He it was does. in Austin, Texas at South by Southwest, and he just kept the theme up, went to Portland. <laughs> so I need to, we need to have him on we and do. find out uh, what conclusions he came to as part <laughs> of his uh, trifecta tour. I think that would be really interesting to see. Uh, all those cities are, I've been, I've got family in Milwaukee, so I'm up in Wisconsin, and I can say that uh, there's something just weird about Wisconsin. And if you've been there, you might be able to agree. <laughs> Love Wisconsin, just something weird. Uh, you know, and Andy, I, I have to say, we can talk about Portlandia here or not, um, but I feel like my jean jacket, I didn't really know that we were going to play this video, but I feel like this jean jacket is very appropriate for our Portland episode because um, it, just you've fits watched right it, in. it just fits right in. It's yes. kind of 90s-ish. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Ish, yes. Ish. Yes. So you enjoy the show. I, I do. I've only done uh, maybe one or two uh, episodes. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm actually going through Lilyhammer right now, which is oh. another great, uh, great show. Uh, that's available on Roku, as are programs from RVNN TV. Absolutely. You can uh, subscribe to us in the Roku Channel Store. And uh, please give us, let me, let me bring this up here. Uh, if you would please give us a uh, rating there, that would be fantastic. Uh, we're right there in the Channel Store. We're in the Outdoor and Fitness section. That's right, and then also we're actually listed in two places. I think the other is in a specialty or oh, something. Oh, great. Yeah, well, you, you need to look for us, but we are there. We're also on Boxy, which is another, uh, another set-top box that uh, enables you to play uh, Internet videos and put them right up on your, on your TV. Absolutely, and uh, of course you can subscribe to our RVNN Daily. We, they go out uh, on, on the day of Friday weekly. It's Friday, Friday-ly. <laughs> uh, so uh, be sure to subscribe to that. Lots of great contributors uh, making that possible. And uh, RVNN is also on Pinterest. Uh, we've got boards for all of our shows. Of course, we're on Google Plus as well. So lots of good stuff going on. And uh, Andy, I'm trying to, whoa, whoa. Oh, there I you am. You got too you many see, things to see, fly here today. Now you today. see me? Now you see me. Now you don't. No, uh, I now see you. Yes. See yes. All right. <laughs> so, got a little too many things going on today. But uh, that's our 60 seconds of not so shameless plugging. But something we do want to plug is a great sponsor of ours, uh, Pet Hub. We're going to be talking with Tom Arnold, the CEO of Pet Hub, this week about some of the great things that are going on there. But they had a video contest. And of course, we like to show these videos because they can say it better than we can. Uh, this is a little tracing your footsteps, if you will, is what I will call this video. Okay.
all made possible through pet hub through that little tag and let me reach over here uh, actually some of them are little some of them are not so little but uh, what you're able to do is put this on your pet's collar and uh, make sure that uh, if they are uh, lost or strayed that uh, a, a good Samaritan be able to shoot that with a smartphone and then have the information on how to get uh, your pet back to you pronto. Absolutely, and of course you can put in that code RVNN20 to receive 20% off their already low price. Andy, it's time for the RV business headlines. We have some interesting ones today. Yeah, huh? actually, actually we do. Uh, two interesting uh, ones. Uh, RVbusiness.com is, of course, our uh, uh, news partner here, and uh, they concentrate on the business of RVs uh, from the RV capital of the world. And uh, also, uh, Sherman Goldenberg, the host of our show, uh, RV Capital Talk. But from time to time, there are stories that are of interest to consumers. And there were two of them, I think, that uh, came up here uh, over the weekend. Uh, of course, we've been following the uh, drama associated with the uh, Camping World and the Donald and uh, NBC's Apprentice. Um, turns out that hunters now are threatening to boycott Camping World. Uh, 75 locations, of course, across the country. But um, Chairman and CEO Marcus Limonis ruled out a future sponsorship of the uh, NBC Celebrity Apprentice TV show because of uh, a hunting expedition and some wild game trophies that were shot in Zimbabwe by the uh, brothers, by uh, Donald Trump's sons, Donald Trump Jr. and uh, Eric. So a statement came up last week saying the camping world believes in personal freedom, but the issue at hand is not whether people are able to hunt or not. Um, the issue is if and when the hunting of endangered species occurs, whether in the U.S. or, or abroad. Uh, lots of comments for them on Facebook, kind of evenly divided between, between the uh, pro and con, many in support of camping world and those who believe in the individual's right to hunt regardless. So, uh, bottom line on all this, uh, if you go to RV Business, uh, you can follow a lot of these uh, comment uh, threads, and of course, uh, in the uh, more public uh, places like TMZ and so forth. Uh, Trump brothers uh, guilty of a PR lapse for sure, but regardless of right and wrong, it looks like uh, publicity for NBC's Apprentice that uh, the network's going to come out the winner. What's that uh, phrase, any publicity is good publicity? I think so. Okay. I think that's exactly <laughs> what's going on. More serious uh, note, though, comes from a company called Sylvan Sport in North Carolina. Uh, they have been a victim of what they call the copycat culture. Uh, Sylvan Sport founder Tom Dempsey found, uh, learned last summer that a product similar to the one he has patented was being made in China when a customer sent him a link to a Chinese company's website. And we may be able to pull that up here in just, uh, in just a moment. Uh, not the Chinese copy, but the U.S. Uh, yeah. copy. Uh, what happened was, it, they first they thought it was uh, pictures of their product, but then they started to look at some of the video and photography and realized that it had been tooled up for scratch. It was a copy. Since then, distributors in South Korea and Japan have decided to market the Chinese company's product instead of the inventors from Silver Sport. Confused customers also have emailed Silver Silver, Sylvan Sport asking about uh, for product support and what's its affiliation with the Chinese company Wuyai Attendee Motion Apparatus. Uh, now these trailers uh, retail for about $8,000. It kind of puts them in a bad position because 15% uh, of their sales came from outside of the U.S. in 2011. About half of that from South Korea and Japan and Australia. And of course they've now gone with the South Korea and Japan have gone with the Chinese supplier, and it's a, a really a serious impact. They expected tw about 30% of 2012 sales to come from overseas, and that's uh, not, uh, not the case. The whole uh, idea of intellectual property uh, isn't firmly established in uh, many parts of Asia, and um, what happens is that they get a sample, get a hold of a sample, and uh, reverse engineer it and figure out how to make it, and that's exactly what happened here. In 2009, there was a uh, man in the Los Angeles area who ordered a Silver and Sport Go, which is an 880-pound camping travel trailer. They wanted, uh, but they wanted it shipped to China not on the uh, regular means, but they wanted to uh, insist that they have their own special shipping. Uh, that did raise a red flag, but as a small business, uh, every sale counted, and that's where they think that it uh, got out. Mm. 
Uh, Sylvan Sport is more versatile than a Swiss Army knife, according yeah. to their website. Can carry boats and bikes on top, then converts into a camper with a self-inflating mattress and a tent that sets up in minutes. And uh, if uh, uh, you think that this is, is an issue, go find a Sylvan Sport dealer and check it out because it looks like a really good product and you hate to see the uh, inventor of this come up on the, on the short end of uh, this uh, trade uh, I issues uh, that generally is the province of governments and monster corporations. Uh, it would be good to see him come out on top in this deal. Absolutely. I, I really enjoy that Go. Um, I follow them on Facebook and on Twitter and it's just a neat product and it's versatile and you, I mean, you could pull it with your Mini Cooper or whatever you want. I mean, it's small enough. You can pull it probably mm -hmm. with an ATV really and uh, neat product and it's just unfortunate. So like we said, we hope they come up on, come up on top. Those are brought to you by the RV uh, Business Magazine and they've got a new issue coming out soon in right. uh, rvbusiness.com. Right. All right, Andy, we've got a new show that we have been talking about here called RV Travel Shop. And we well, need to talk about we that. We do need to talk about it. <laughs> you have a great product or RV accessory, pull out that flip cam or smartphone and get ready for RV Travel Shop on RVNN TV. Make your own five-minute infomercial and put it in front of thousands of people who've already said, I love RVing, on a set-top box that's already in over three million homes. Maybe you have real pitchman talent. Maybe you just show people what you've got. On RV Travel Shop, people can view your product video at any time for 30 days on the Roku video player. That's the same player Netflix uses to put movies on your flat screen TV, plus videos for major channels like Disney, Hulu, Pandora, NBC, and Fox, and Angry Birds. The same low-cost player that thousands more homeowners will add to their home this week. RV Travel Shop on RVNN TV is a flat fee, month-to-month -month contract with no special codes, no order tracking, and no paperwork or commissions. Contact us now, 1-877-578-7866, or by email, rvtravelshop at rvnn.tv. Yeah, and it's not only for uh, for RV related stuff. It's also for camping uh, supplies. We've got a couple of uh, very interesting products that we're going to have a chance to um, uh, bring into the travel shop here shortly. So keep on the lookout uh, for that. Uh, should be on the Roku here shortly. Very very cool. All right, now it is uh, the time where we talk about our trending RV, our topics on the social media side of things. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, and Pinterest. If there's something else we're missing, please let us know. We will get on there. Uh, first up, something I tweeted out this c last weekend, uh, just kind of a question. And Andy, I think I told you about this product last week, and I'm just a little curious if it's practical, it's not practical, if it's one of those things where it's we've got the solution to the problem you don't have. You know, okay. it's clever, but I don't know. I, you know, you hope they do well. It's uh, the RV rug keepers. A rug a keeper. Rug now, keeper. maybe uh, you can explain what that does. So, if you're RVing, you might have an outdoor rug that you would put underneath your stair step, or, you know, as you exit the RV and as you enter the RV. Okay. And uh, a lot of people use rocks to keep that rug down if it's windy or, or, or whatnot. Yes, yes. Uh, this is a decorative rug keeper it keeps it down they've got different um like they've got animals and things like that and it's just a, a very heavy it's 100 percent recycled rubber which is good mm -hmm. um but they're weatherproof uh easy to stack and store and they won't uh will not move on the rug or carpet making it highly wind resistant uh not only do they keep your rug in place but they're also aesthetically pleasing so they've got a few different kinds of shapes in which i don't think is actually on here um Pat, depending on this, what do you think, Andy? Well, I think that uh, I'm not sure that this is a, a really big problem, but I could see how it would be useful. And it's kind of like the, the same technology to use to keep a rug from slipping on a uh, on a wooden floor or something, right? Yeah, exactly. It's um, it just, you know, it's novel. It's uh, like we said, we hope they do well. It's just something that I saw and I thought, huh. I'm not an RVer, so I don't really know how big of a problem this is. Mm -hmm. You know, we get a lot of emails from you all telling us what they are and what they aren't. But 
let me know your feedback on that. I'm just a little interested. That's the rug keeper. Check it out. We've got the uh, link on the show notes. Uh, next up is something I retweeted from uh, just five more minutes in our airstream. We've talked about them a few times. They will be joining us here in the near future. Um, she was a uh, she Monica of just five more minutes in our airstream was featured um, on feed 52 uh, the tiniest kitchen. Now we've talked about Monica before and she is an incredible, incredible cook and she makes amazing meals in her airstream. Mm -hmm. And so she was featured as in the tiniest kitchen because they said, if you can believe it, Monica cooked this uh, celeric, celeriac soup. In this thing, <laughs> and in this thing is an airstream, and the kitchen, of course, is not all that large. Um, but if you go to uh, just five more minutes in our airstream, she's got recipes that are almost always built in this airstream. So it's kind of one of those encouraging you to cook really, really well, even though your kitchen small doesn't mean your meals have to be uh, lacking because of that. And she's quoted in this in this article saying that she absolutely adores her kitchen, and sometimes she'll even cook in the airstream if it's parked at home. Mm. And they asked her why. Uh, she says the generous countertops, big double sinks, the abundant storage, the three range gas cooktop and my handy little oven with an awesome broiler with real flames. Uh, plus cleanup is a breeze. And what she loves most about her Airstream kitchen is that everything has its place. So there's no need to store, keep things all over your countertops, which I think would almost be an advantage to something small. I have just downsized mm -hmm. my living. And what I had to do is get rid of the junk, get rid of the clutter, and I only have what I need. And Andy, I'm really finding out that this is the best. It's it's awesome because everything's organized. You know where it's at, and I think a lot of our viewers can relate. Uh -huh. So what do you think? Are so, you, I, well, I, I suspect that, um, uh, for, for example, um, we were uh, working here for the weekend, and uh, um, I was, I was uh, instructed to bring a cookie sheet <laughs> over. And, uh, you know, there's uh, three or four uh, uh, cookie sheets there in the cabinet. I just grabbed uh, one that looked uh, fine to me. And uh, it turned out that that was not the right one. And I was like, well, we never use this. Well, why do, why do we still have it? Well, we, got, we, we have room. But in the RV, you wouldn't have room. Sure. And so uh, the uh, uh, obsolete uh, cooking accessories and so forth, I suspect, have to disappear pretty quickly. They probably do. And uh, that's something that I, I am um, very much in love with a certain product of kitchen utensils and I have way too many mm -hmm. and some people were very uh, happy recipients of some of those but I thought I haven't used this for a while and I think as you go and you get an RV and we've talked with like the winds and a lot of people it's just like I don't need this it's getting rid of the clutter and I think it was um uh, oh goodness why am I I'm going blank right now Anyways, one of our guests one of our guests it's Monday. I'm sorry. Uh, but they just said it's so, it's so, uh, it's liberating. therapeutic. Yeah, it's yes. liberating mm -hmm. just to get rid of all the junk and just move forward. So uh, just an interesting little uh, article there. And it's encouraging that you can cook very well in your RV. All right. Something I posted on Facebook this weekend was, uh, Andy, you'll like this one. It's, it's all about technology. It's uh, 10 I'm ways technology will change travel by 2020. And we've talked about this, Andy. We've We've had conversations, there's been articles, and the guy who wrote this article says that when in 2006 he was a freshman in college, or I think, I mean, he says freshman, I'm assuming college, Facebook was huge, full length movies streamed instantly to my computer, my cell phone took 1.2 <laughs> <laughs> megabytes of or pictures, and it's like this, I, I mean, technology moves in, in dog ears, as we said. And now they're talking about how that's going to uh, influence our travel as well. So they said in 2012, flying cars. So uh, if I look at the calendar, we're in 2012. Uh, probably a little bit different uh, than the Jetsons, but mm -hmm. there will be flying cars. In 2013, they're talking about speech-to-speech -speech translation. Yeah, uh, I've, I've got some of these uh, pulled, pulled yeah. up uh, over here. And uh, there's the flying car. Okay. Um uh, the, it's like uh, a transformer. It, 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 it is, but um, but I think uh, two hundred seventy thousand dollars. It's a little salty. It's uh, <laughs> more more than a little more than a little salty, but uh, it certainly uh, uh, looks looks novel. You know, one of the things that uh, we have to look about here or think about is that uh, flying cars, in one form or another, have uh, have a long and illustrious past. I think uh, perhaps back to the 1930s, but certainly after World War II, that there have been a number of uh, uh, vehicles that uh, uh, kind of attacked, uh, you know, trying to attack this uh, this marketplace, but uh, 
you know that's that's kind of that's kind of rough it, but it some of the other things that they talk about could be a lot more affordable and a lot more useful it is and you know actually andy going back to that flying car i remember um it, it's been a couple months but there was a ted talk on flying cars and it was these mit you know Mm -hmm. uh, grad students doing this project and it was really incredible but the the mo the scariest thing about it is who's going to try it first <laughs> who's going to be the one <laughs> to take this car and see if it flies um, and so you know I flying cars um, will you have a flying RV or a car of some sort that can pull your RV it's just interesting how this will affect uh, all this technology it's already I affecting in a positive way the RV industry you're seeing um, a lot of interesting and really neat things going into the um, engineering uh solar flight uh what's some other stuff here oh you've, oh, uh, you've got the flying car website yeah, there's, up. There's, the, there's the flying car and uh, this comes under the uh, heading of light sport aircraft which has uh, um, uh, some some other things associated yeah. with it but uh, here it is there is the a uh, uh, picture of the uh, uh, of the aircraft uh, in flight so you know, it's like uh, anything else. Uh, there have to be some early adopters that are able yep. to uh, um, to uh, get these things rolling on, and then if there is a market uh, for that, perhaps uh, move into in a more of a of a mass production. Absolutely. And Andy, did you see um, down the list here? You've got self uh, charging holographic mobile phones but 2016 which we're already seeing which i would be very very not surprised if this was like 2014 instead of 16 augmented reality everything which mm -hmm. we've talked a lot about in our travel apps uh, some augmented reality apps and just really yeah, really the, neat the, and the holographic mobile phone that's that that's <laughs> not uh, uh far reaching uh, I at all uh, in fact, you could om almost argue with some of the Pico uh, projectors that mm -hmm. we've uh, seen at, uh, uh, at, at CES. Uh, if you had a medium, a mist of something that the light could reflect off of that uh, the, uh, the um, Princess Leia uh, holographic uh, system could, uh, could very, very easily be here within the next, uh, next, uh, next year or two. And of course, augmented reality. You know, we've uh, actually uh, talked about yes. apps that uh, offer you a taste of that uh, right now. Many of them free. Absolutely. So it's it's going to be interesting. Uh, they talked about biometric and el electronically enhanced passports. Uh, 2019 self-driving cars. Does that include RVs? Because I would be frightened. A car, still frightening, but an RV, large and in charge, coming down the road, driving itself. I don't know. What do you think? I, I think uh, you know the technology is going to be way out in front <laughs> of the uh, of the lawyers on this. On yeah, this abs one. absolutely. And, uh, so uh, so that may be uh, be interesting to see how that uh, sorts itself out. However, um, uh, the state of Nevada just recently actually created a uh, driver's license uh, category for robots in order to mm. encourage um, the uh, the uh, testing of these uh, vehicles. And I think one of the other things uh, would be uh, to see what the actual loss profile that's generated by these uh, from an insurance company standpoint, uh, if there are really substantial advantages, um, the, the, the money might, uh, might prevail. There you go. Very interesting article. I knew you'd like it. Yeah. Uh, so check that out. It's on our Facebook, and we, of course, have the direct link to that on our show notes. Uh, next up, uh, Best of Google+, Plus. something that I put out there today. I'm actually going to to uh, play the video, Andy, but I know you and I hope, and our fingers are crossed, that in the next, maybe even this coming year, or in the next couple years, that we both will have uh, Burning Man experiences. Exactly. I think it's both. Uh, it's on both of our bucket lists. And uh, the Winds, who have joined us here on live before, uh, they did a really awesome video uh, that talks about a virgin's guide to Burning Man. So here it is. So you've decided to come to Burning Man, huh? Here's a few tips to make your virgin burn a successful one. <laughs> Bikes are a great way to get around the city, but there are a few things you need to know, like fat tires and a fat seat so your butt doesn't hurt by the end of the day. Decorate your bicycle. It's not only a great way to see your bicycle, but it's fun for everybody else. <coughs> Noisemakers are great so that you can be heard. And lights are really important so you can be seen at night because it's really dark. And last but not least, don't forget to write your name, your camp, and your phone number on your bicycle somewhere. So that way, in case you lose your bike, you can find it again. Shoes. 
Choose closed-toed shoes because the fly is extremely dusty and you don't want a bad case of fly a foot. Gifting. You're probably wondering what gifting really is, right? Well, it can be lots of things. Something as simple as a fun sticker, homemade buttons, a pair of earrings, or something as awesome as the gift of a drink. But the gift is the drink, not the cup. So bring your own. Eyewear. You want to have a ton of options. From the light days, to the medium days, to the hardcore days. The best goggles can be found online. But if you're a last minute shopper like us, check your local store and the ATV section. Costumes. Not only are they a social tool around here, but you'll stand out if you're not wearing one. It can be something as simple as a fun pair of glasses, a funky hat, or the full shebang. Just get clever and have fun. Volunteer. Get involved. It's a great way to meet other birders, whether it's with the city or a theme camp. Become a part of the Burning Man experience. Water. Black Rock City is in the middle of the desert, so bring a lot more than you think you'll ever use, because why not? Light yourself up. Can't stress how important it is to be lit on the playa. There's a lot going on. And if you don't light yourself, we can't see you. Remember, ice and coffee are the only things sold in Black Rock City. So anything else you want or need, you're going to have to bring. So read over the website, subscribe to the newsletter, and be prepared before you get out here. Enjoy, Enjoy your, your burn. burn. That's got to be uh, just an incredible experience and what a, a, an environment from an RVing standpoint to be able and have uh, some of the comforts of home uh, as opposed to uh, mm -hmm. spending time in the desert, uh, say, in a tent. Absolutely. They said, you know, the only things that you can get there are coffee and ice. So you need to bring a lot with you. And if you're just doing tent camping or something like that, it could be a little difficult to keep things cold. But uh, the, the winds also have another part to this series. It's what to kind of prepare your RV for, not ah. just yourself, but your RV for Burning Man. So if uh, you're looking to do that, be sure to check that out. That's from the winds. All right, Andy, Pinterest. Uh, let's do this because this is... Again, over the weekend, you're a silent ninja. You come up, you post something, and it's like the most popular <laughs> thing that's ever hit Pinterest. All right, so we posted, Andy posted a picture this weekend to Geocache Radar. This is the uh, Sundial Bridge at Turtle Bay Exploration Park in Redding, California. Does this have something to do with our Geocache Radar? It, it does, in fact, but what an interesting place because uh, this bridge has only been around since 2004, but the roadbed is made out of glass. Wow. So oh. instead of uh, asphalt and, 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 and so forth. And uh, it's a, the, the bridge is set so that it totally does not impact the river because there's uh, salmon runs and so forth that, mm -hmm. uh, that occur there. And it's just, it's just cool and it looks like a sundial. Wow. Very, very cool. So by glass, it's not see the road, it's not see-through. Uh, it's it? not see-through. It's, okay. it's translucent, but then they have it lit at night. And, oh, uh, very cool. A, 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 and there are, if you follow the links associated with that, there are a number of uh, really cool photographs. Very, very cool. All right, next I always like to show one. This has actually started to, to, to trend this morning. Uh, this is uh, actually a picture of a DSLR camera, but it's uh, linked up to our uh, tips on your DSLR controls from what's wrong with this picture. So really practical tools if you're a DSLR owner and uh, want to know how to use it better. This is a great uh, something to pin on your board to kind of a go-to if you have a question about anything. Uh, but like I said, posted this morning, already has got some really good traction. So check that out. Of course, all of our shows have their own board on our Pinterest. We can check us out at Pinterest.com forward slash RVNN. All right, Andy, let's talk about uh, GoToMeeting. GoToMeeting, yes. Uh, GoToMeeting is a tool that we use all the time here at uh, RVNN TV. And we actually had a situation where it didn't work. And therein is the difference. Because what happened, we had a meeting and we were getting ready to show some uh, slides using a, a keynote or PowerPoint. And uh, all of a sudden, we bring up the slides and everything was blank. And uh, this is not good when you're trying to do a presentation. Uh, we were able to uh, show the desktop and step through the slides and, uh, and get the meeting taken care of. But what was very, very interesting was um, after we finished that meeting, I got on the, on the line to tech support, I had uh, a couple of ways to interact. I could interact on chat and kind of pose my question. And I did that, and they said, hey, call this phone number. 
and I uh, called and within uh, probably a minute and a half, two minutes, had a, a connection with a uh, tech support engineer uh, who was able to fully explain what had happened. Because what had happened was that uh, uh, I had accepted a software update for Keynote that had kind of uh, changed one of the preferences. And uh, you know, when it uh, reinstalled, and for me, with the problem, he says, uh, "Open this panel, you know, click on this box, and boom, everything was back uh, back in order." And I think that's the important thing: is not only do you have a great product where you can meet as often as you want for as long as you need, but you've got tech support that you can depend upon. So it's a great product. Go to GoToMeeting.com, click on the Try It Free button, and make sure that you put in the word podcast. P O D. C A S T. Go to meeting, affordable online meetings made easy. Very, very good. All right. Uh, it is the travel app of the day section. And if you watched Friday, I think you probably had a good idea of what I was going to show today for our travel app of the day. Of course, it's not a travel app, but Andy, uh, being the father of, of three kids, you know that the uh, traveling portion of your trip can be the most difficult. Because you've got uh, maybe some fighting siblings or some, they're a little bored? That, that does happen from time to time. And uh, this has just turned out to be a great, a great app. We have been playing this uh, this weekend. <laughs> Good. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's kind of like words with, words with friends, except it's a little bit uh, different. And all ages can participate. You don't even have to be able to read. No, you don't. This is really, really fun. What we're talking about is draw something. I think it's pretty much gone viral uh, pretty quickly. I've got a quick video if you're not familiar with it to show you what it's all about. All righty. So draw something, Andy. I'm so <laughs> proud that you went out and played it this weekend. It, it is, uh, and and it's amazing how how uh, how simple it is, but how how frustrating it can be uh, as you're trying to figure out. Okay, in seven letters, you know these seven <laughs> letters. What what in the world am I looking at here? And I've got um. Okay, so I've got my app up here. It's whoa. It's uh, green screening out there. Okay, so. You tap to watch, and the, and the funniest part is, is that they can watch. You can watch them. Ooh, look at that! Here, you you, yeah, if you can do that, <laughs> uh, you can watch them guess there we what go. you're drawing. Oh, it's oh, I got to put you on. There you are. There we go. It's kind of green screening you out too for some reason. It's yeah, cool. that I'm not. I'm I'm not sure. There's a lot of reflections here. So th that's new to me. Did I win? Oh, we got a coin. I did. You did. <laughs> All right. So this will keep you. Thank you. Uh, well, you, it'll keep you busy for hours. And Andy, I'm, I'm not going to lie. This weekend, it, I, I said, okay, I need to leave by this time. And I had l a couple minutes, so I thought, I'll I'll play. Right. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, I thought, where did 15 minutes just go? Because I was so engrossed in drawing. I'm a horrible drawer. I'm just so thankful that I have friends that know what they're doing and, and can guess well. I, you know, they show some of these pictures and I'm thinking, yeah, right. I cannot draw like that. Uh, but Andy, the, the best part about this is, is that it's free. The second best part about this is you can get it for any of your iOS devices and it's available in the Android marketplace as well. So really, really fun. And if you are going on a road trip, which I know so many of you will be doing, it is camping season. Uh, you're taking the kiddos out. Spring break is, is uh, upon us. Download this app if you've got your iPad, your iPhone, or whatever, your iPod Touch. Uh, do it. It'll keep your kids occupied if they're fighting. Uh, <laughs> may mm -hmm. Maybe keep mm -hmm. some uh, arguments uh, out of the way. So check it out. It's called Draw Something. It's free. And we've got a link uh, on how you can download that and all the good stuff. So anyways, moving on, Andy, uh, this weekend. Busy or, week. Yeah, we do have a very, very busy week. And uh, this probably is a light schedule so far uh tomorrow night we'll be uh recording a brand new live episode of geocaching world right here at 6 30 p.m eastern of course that's tuesday tomorrow march 20th uh live we will be on wednesday it streams from 12 to 4 p.m eastern 
right here and of course on Friday as well. So uh, we will be live all those days and probably adding a few live sessions as well. I would imagine mm -hmm. we will have updates on guests and all that great information. And Andy, you were very busy over the weekend. We posted lots of great stuff. What do we have come we out did. this weekend? Oh, well, we had uh, What's Wrong With This Picture, the uh, DSLR uh, episode. Uh, we actually had um, w one episode from RV Capital Talk uh, talking about Keystone Automotive and uh, uh, how they have um, uh, augmented one of the largest uh, parts suppliers, which to the consumer means that you'll be able to get spare parts much more quickly when your uh, RV needs to be, uh, to be repaired. And also we talked about on uh, Tales from the Road, uh, Dr. Wendy explained uh, how the old days of veterinary science of uh, just make sure your animal gets his shots uh, that that's uh, kind of uh, gone by the wayside and uh, that modern veterinary uh, clinics have uh, a different way of uh, working with animals and uh, the, the whole notion of, is wellness to try and and uh, detect early and uh, manage what's manageable and uh, it, it was just very a good perspective on uh, what's happening in the world of keeping your pet healthy and particularly on the road. Exactly. So many things you encounter on the road that you don't when you're in your quiet, uh, you know, confines of your own home that you're familiar with, that your pet's familiar with. You take them out of that and things can go wrong, unfortunately. So uh, great episode. And Andy, we just have to talk about real, real, real quickly before we go into Geocache Radar. Uh, these new shows that we're posting, uh, What's Wrong With This Picture, Tales From The Road, they are in a new format. So if you go and check them out, they are brand new shows, but they're a little bit uh, easier to consume. We're, we're talking on a specific topic for a short amount of time, so we're not... Uh, it's not, it's, it's not lengthy. It's not lengthy, yes. and it's just really, really informative. It's very dense information. So just uh, go ahead and check that out. We'd love to hear your feed feedback. Andy, Geocache Radar for today, what, what do we got? Geocache Radar is from Redding, California, as you would expect. It's Geocache Radar episode GCRD 112-1. Today's cache is near Redding, California. While in the area, you could go to the Sundial Bridge. It opened in 2004 with a translucent non-skid deck that provides spectacular viewing at night. It's made out of glass. It links the two sections of the 300-acre Turtle Bay Exploration Park. The park has museums, art gallery, wildlife exhibits, a forest camp, summer butterfly house, and an arboretum and botanical gardens. The Lassen Volcanic National Park has boiling mud pots, steaming ground, roaring fumaroles, and sulfurous gases, all linked to active volcanism. 1915, an explosion erupted at Lassen Peak, the southernmost active volcano in this Cascade Range. The explosion was the most powerful in a series of eruptions, the most recent to occur in the Cascades prior to the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens. Mount Shasta towers over them all. Over 15,000 summit attempts are made every year, only a third of which are successful. The magnificent cone soars more than 5,000 feet above its tallest neighbor and more than 10,000 feet above its base elevation. An ice axe and crampons are necessary for all routes. One-day ascents are possible, but beginners will want to take at least two days so they can have more time to acclimatize. All are within easy driving distance of today's cache. A difficulty of one, but a terrain of five. It's GC249VR, called number 60. It's just sitting there. That's why it's a difficulty of one, and it's a 10-ribbon favorite. There are waypoints to help you guide you past what's called the Cliffs of Doom. There are distinctive logs and a traverse to the base of the rock wall to another log. Approximate coordinates, north 40 degrees, 56 minutes, west 122, 14 minutes. For full details, go to geocaching.com, the official global GPS geocache hunt site. Don't forget to set up your geocaching base camp in the area with My Campmate, the base camp planning app for all sorts of outdoor activities. My Campmate allows you to plan trips with friends, find money-saving deals on campgrounds, RV parks, and supplies nearby, and coordinate who's going to bring what right from your iPhone. Android market version coming soon. For show notes on this cache, go to rbnewsnet.com forward slash geocache radar. Information is believed to be valid at a time of production. Conditions may change. Use common sense and caution and do not trespass. Keep geocaching a fun and family RV activity. Geocache Radar is a production of RV Newsnet, RVN TV, and is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. 
cliffs of doom just doesn't have the you know if you're kind of scared of heights you might want to think about that and uh, I don't know that it says especially the mountain climber skills are required but uh, you it's it's going to be a challenge and uh, but apparently apparently a great one because it's a 10 ribbon uh, favorite so uh, a lot of folks have recommended that uh, as as well huh. uh, what a great area of the country yeah you were just telling me about that and it fits in with our interview there, or not interview, our show there in uh, Portland, and I decided over the break that I need to road trip to the northwest coast this summer. Over the break? Ju I mean, just like yeah. in the past two minutes? Two minutes. Oh, so okay. June, July, or August, you told me. So June, July, or August, I sh hopefully uh, will be it, out that it, way. It, it, <laughs> at some point. Uh, yeah. Nice place for a weekend. Nice place for a weekend, <laughs> yeah. Or maybe uh, that's one of those places where I just don't come back. Yeah, you, you would probably want to plan for a little longer than that. <laughs> anyway. Uh, that would be a, a great, a great vacation. Also, don't forget to uh, check out my campmate, uh, Tyler Campbell, and uh, has been a guest here before. And you know they're becoming much more involved in uh, GCash Radar. So uh, check that out. Another great free app to make your RVing and outdoor and uh, camping experience uh, much more fun and uh, save you money besides. Very cool. We need to have Tyler on here again soon. Uh, that's all for today, Andy. And uh, it's lunchtime for us, so we are going to jet out. But we'll be back on Wednesday for another episode of RVNN Live. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Courtney Wallen. Hey, and Andy McCaskey from RVNN TV. We'll see you on Wednesday. Today's show is brought to you by Angie's List, where you'll find thousands of unbiased reports and reviews about service companies in your area. Whether you're looking for a roofer, plumber, house cleaner, dentist, or even a doctor, Angie's List members share their experiences with each other so that you can choose the service company that's right for your job. Companies can't pay to be on Angie's List, and the reviews come from people just like you who have had experience with the companies mentioned. To find out more, go to rvnn.tv and click on the Angie's List ad.